everybody, my name is Michelle. I'm a volunteer here at Colorado Wolf and Wildlife Center, and today we're here with Navi and Tala. Um, we had a couple of questions this week, and of course this is our weekly wolf blog, I think number five. Um, <laughs> some of the questions that we had this week were a little bit um, more in-depth than some of the other questions that we had, so we're only going to answer two questions this week. Um, the first question that we had is, what would you do if you encountered a wolf in the wild? Um, I think the situation that was actually posed to us was if you're out walking your dog and wolves were to approach you. Um, generally, if you're accompanying your dog in the woods, the wolves are not going to come up and approach you. However, um, springtime is really the biggest possibility of a situation like that happening. And the reason why is because in the springtime, of course, is when the wolves are having puppies. And wolves do only breed once a year, um, so they're not going to have like pups in July or March or, or I'm sorry, in August or anything like that. Um, it's only in March and April. And so if you're out walking your dogs in the woods and it is springtime, um, the wolves are going to be a lot more defensive of their territory. They're more likely to approach. Uh, but generally, the presence of a person is still enough to keep them away. However, on the chance that they do continue to approach, uh, just like with any wild animal, it's best to act big, scary, and loud. Uh, when I go hiking, and of course we don't have wolves in Colorado in the wild, but we do still have bears, we have mountain lions, uh, we have coyotes, lots of coyotes, uh, so I always bring an air horn with me. And of course, um, in the springtime, the best idea also is to keep your dogs on a leash so they don't go off after the wildlife and chase them uh, because that's more of a people problem rather than an animal problem. So air horns are really good. Um, anything that could be taken off, like a big jacket, fluffy coat, um, something that you can throw at them. A lot of people, because we have coyotes that'll approach people, um, you can always throw, <laughs> throw rocks, and that sounds mean, but again, you're not doing anything to actually hurt the animal. It just gives them a pretty good scare. And of course, uh, when it comes to wolves, like I said, their natural tendencies are to be very shy and wary of people. However, we get a lot of messages on Facebook. We've had some people on our tours um, from, say, Idaho. I think there was a, gi a guy in Washington a few weeks ago. Um, and of course, in Minnesota and Wisconsin, they'll say, well, we got stalked by wolves before. So there's a lot of difference between stalking and curiosity. And unfortunately, I don't think a lot of people understand the difference because if you're out in the woods and you're walking through a wolf territory and the wolves happen to see you, they might approach you to kind of check you out. Um, there's a really great uh, story and some pictures on uh, the internet about some wolves in Yellowstone in 2006 that approached some photographers. Now the photographers were upwind so the wolves couldn't smell them, but they can see them. And so the wolves actually approached the photographers. They got about 100 feet away from them before they realized they were people. They sat there, they looked at them for a little bit, and then they walked away. That's pretty typical. Um, now, in the last 150 years, there's actually been just a few, a small, small handful of fatal wolf attacks in North America, but the majority of those attacks were not um, related to a healthy wolf. So a healthy wolf, again, they're gonna be frightened about coming up to people. Unfortunately, when an animal has rabies, or if they've been socialized. Um, I believe there was a case in Minnesota a couple years ago where a wolf was being fed at a campsite. Don't ever feed animals at a campsite. Um, and the wolf ended up approaching somebody and ended up biting them. So they consider that a wolf attack. Again, I don't really consider that as one because that is a people problem. It's not an animal's problem. Um, so the other question that we had was relating to wolves and livestock. So overall, according to the United States Department of Agriculture, we lose about 4 million cows every year in the United States. And that's not when we are supposed to kill them, <laughs> to eat them. Um, unfortunately, uh, out of that 4 million cows, I think a lot of predators are blamed for it, but predator losses actually only amount to less than 200,000 of those livestock losses. And the majority of those losses are due to coyotes. Now, in the places that wolves are found, of course, they're gonna be responsible for slightly more livestock losses, um, but unfortunately, they're still being blamed as the big bad wolf, and that's not something that they actually are. Um, more cows in wolf country are killed by birds of prey than by wolves. Um, so they're really not the big bad wolf that they're made out to be, but um, statistically, like I said, out of that three, or, or, I'm sorry, out of the four million cows that get killed every year, in the United States, uh, before they're supposed to be, are actually 
um, 3.8 million of those are d killed by disease and weather. So predators aren't even a big part of the problem. They're just a tiny little portion of the pie. Um, but yet we blame predators for the majority of it when they're not to blame. So the big question that we had with wolves and livestock was how to coexist with them. And kind of going along the lines of what you would do if you encountered one when you're walking, hazing works very well. The state of Oregon actually requires wolves and, uh, to be hazed before lethal methods can be taken. And since 2012, they actually haven't had to take any lethal action on wolves in Oregon because hazing works and it works very well when it's done right. Um, so hazing is basically a scare tactic. It can be anything from putting up flags on fences to actually going out and riding the range and scaring off animals. Um, it can be what my friends do which is they go out and take their rifles and instead of actually shooting the coyotes because of course like I said we don't have wolves here in Colorado um, they will take their rifles and they'll shoot all the dirt around them and they haven't lost a calf in eight years and they haven't had to kill a single coyote because of it. Uh, hazing works very well and you can also use uh, other non-lethal deterrents such as beanbag guns it sounds kind of mean but you can use paintball guns too because the point of hazing is to leave the animals with a very bad memory um, and it's essentially you're holding your own territory um, against the wolves or coyotes or mountain lions or bears or whatever you might have. So they learn um, that they shouldn't be able to come around because something bad happens to them when they come to your property. And that's really the best way to work with wildlife um, and coexistence is using scare tactics like hazing. Um, that way everybody works together. So again, this was our weekly wolf blog. And please let us know if you have any questions at all, um, whether it's pertaining to the wolves here at the center or the coyotes or the foxes or wolves or other wildlife in the wild.